Over the past few weeks, interest rates have continued to go up, and we're now in a market where rates are higher than they've been in the last 10 years. Not only six months ago, eight months ago, we had rates that were lower than they've ever been in history, and now we're at a 10-year high. What does this mean for you as a normal everyday consumer? Well, take a look at this episode of More About Mortgages because I'm going to dive into what exactly these higher interest rates and what exactly this inflation means for you and how it could change your plans. Thank you for joining me, guys, for another episode of More About Mortgages. My name is Ian Moore. I'm a senior loan officer here with Premier Mortgage Lending. Thanks for joining me and tuning in to another episode. Rates have continued to go up over these last few weeks and coupled with the economies of inflation that we're seeing right now, it's made a lot of changes for people out there that have planning that have planned to buy or sell a home. We've seen rates go up almost two percentage points in the last six months or so. Even in the last two to three weeks, we've seen them jump from around four and a quarter to over 5%, which is insane, guys. I saw this morning that rates right now, mortgage rates for that matter, were at a 10-year high. We have not seen rates this high, over 5%, since 2011, early 2011. So we've really experienced a change, and what the Federal Reserve is going to do, guys, is they're gonna continue to make borrowing money more expensive and more costly for the consumers out there until they can combat this inflation in the market, uh, because that's their overall goal right now, guys, is they don't want this inflation to end up becoming you know, more serious than it already is and leading to you know, stagnation in the, in the economy, and ultimately a potential you know, shutdown in the economy. What do we need to do and what do these higher interest rates mean for you? Well, it adjusts your buying power for you guys out there planning on buying a house. Rates that go up a quarter of a percent, even a half a percent, not gonna ultimately adjust your buying power too much. But rates that have gone from 2.875 or 2.9 all the way up to five and a quarter, 5%, that will ultimately change your buying power, guys, and ultimately change what you'll qualify for when looking at properties to buy. So obviously you've seen it at your everyday retail stores, going in for groceries or getting gas, everything is more expensive right now, guys, and that includes houses. Why? As somebody who's planning on buying a house, guys, you're gonna wanna reach out to your local loan officer if you haven't done so already. A lot of my clients I've already reached out to and we've already gone through your buying power and what the higher interest rates mean for your qualifying ability, but if your loan officer has not touched base with you, now would be a good time to do so, guys, because your interest rate of three and a quarter, even four and a quarter, that doesn't exist anymore unless you wanna pay thousands of dollars for discount points to get that lower rate um, or obtain that lower rate, then you're gonna be right around 5%, if not higher, depending on what your qualifying FICO score is. So reach out to your local lender, your loan, local loan officer, find out what your new monthly mortgage payment would look like and what ultimately purchase price you're gonna be qualifying for. Because guys, I can tell you, if you qualified for a $500,000 purchase before at a rate of three, 4%, now you're gonna be looking at about 350 to 400 with the higher interest rates. And you're gonna to wanna to see if you're even comfortable with the monthly mortgage payment at that lower purchase price. Because even with that reduced purchase price, the higher interest rates make more of an impact on the monthly payments. So you may wanna even go lower than that and drop in your purchase power a little bit um, to a more comfortable zone for the monthly payment. Ultimately, everything, guys, is up right now. The cost of every single item that you can purchase on the market is increased, and houses are no different. Property values are still surging and through the roof right now. Homeowners have more equity than ever. The problem is they don't have anywhere to utilize that equity. They can't sell and walk away from their house that they're in right now and make a ton of money in liquid because they won't have anywhere to go. There's not a lot of inventory out there for somebody to sell and then buy. However, we've started to see more and more inventory hit the open market in the last week and a half, two weeks, which is a great sign. The numbers are staying pretty low because houses are going so quickly off of the market that they're only in the MLS for a day or two before they're sold and they're pending and under contract and then they're no longer listed as an active listing. So the active number of listing guys is staying pretty low. However, the fortunate thing and the good news about this is that that doesn't necessarily mean listings are staying low. The listings are starting to pop. We're entering the spring market now. We're into the end of April, almost into May. We're gonna start seeing more houses out there that are gonna be listed. And we're not gonna see as much competition, the fiery competition where houses are going for $150,000 over the original asking price uh, because there's more to choose from and there's more opportunities for people. Um, I actually just read an article before filming this episode where in, I think it was Utah, where a Redfin agent had to continue to lower their sales price to attract more buyers. Now, if you ask me, I'd say in this market, they probably overpriced that listing in the first place, but um, 
that's a good sign. You know, agents are actually reducing their prices to attract more buyers, which is co completely opposite from what we've been encountering lately, where sellers can basically dictate anything. And if they really want to, they can request that you give them your firstborn child in order to secure that house and they'll do it. The market's starting to swing and everything's changing for the better. The only downside is, is that inflation is still high um, and that's trickling down into other aspects of our life. And interest rates, unfortunately, is one of those main aspects right now. The Federal Reserve expects that to raise the federal funds rate at least two more times throughout this year. Fortunately, after the pandemic, the federal funds rate doesn't necessarily translate to mortgage rates as, you know, as directly as it would have in the past. However, it still means that mortgage rates can expect at least two more upticks uh, this year. Let's hope that the uh, economy and the inflation can work itself out. Obviously, the Fed is doing everything they can by increasing, you know, the return and the cost of bonds and, and um, uh, borrowing money out there. So they're aggressively trying to tighten things up and, uh, you know, combat the inflation. So let's hope and do your part. You know, spend less money out there for, for, a time, for the time being because the sooner we get rid of it, the better it'll be for everybody and the sooner we'll start to see rates come, come back in the right direction. As a loan officer has been lending now in the mortgage lending business for about 11 years now, it's not so much the increased rates that I'm worried about at all for that matter. The increased rates for, for us that have been doing this a long time and have good sources in place and, and um, you know, good foundation, we know that we're just gonna have to work harder and get more market share in order to continue to do the same amount of business. But ultimately, it also means that a lot of our competitors and competition out there that you know, majority handle a lot of refinances or a lot of easy online kind of applications, they're not gonna stay in the market because they're not gonna be able to afford to, to remain in business anymore if they're not closing any more loans. So um, ultimately, we're gonna start seeing a lot of the mortgage lenders out there go away. We've already seen, you know, a lot of the banks, actually not a lot of them, but a few of them already, Santander, I think is one of them, uh, remove mortgage origination from their overall, you know, platform. We're going to see that across the board now, and this is this is when a lot of the lenders start to fall out, and more uh, professional kind of career loan officers and lenders start kind of getting spotlighted and pop up to the forefront. So that's what we want to happen: is essentially just to grab more market share. And um, you know, when interest rates are increasing, the problem is is that banks, credit unions, they operate slower than people like brokers or correspondent lenders. So where our rate sheets are up to date to the hour, they're, they're operating on rate sheets that are weeks delayed. Therefore, they're still offering rates that were market rates a week and a half ago. So where a bank might be able to offer you a lower rate, they might only be able to offer that rate because they're less up to date with keeping their pricing matrices, matrices um, you know, directly current to today's information and data. It's only when rates kind of level off and stay where they're where they're going is when it, it starts to get good because then everybody's back on the same playing field. It's more about service than it is necessarily what the interest rate is, but we're more on an equal playing field and can offer very competitive rates uh, to all of our competitors at that point and not just some. Thanks for joining me for another episode of More About Mortgages, where we hit home on the higher interest rates and the higher inflation in the economy and what that means for you out there if you're planning to buy a house or if you're planning on maybe selling your current house and buying a new house. Um, talk to your local loan officers, guys, about renewing your pre-approvals, seeing exactly what you can qualify for and what your buying power looks like now that the interest rates are up. So. Appreciate you joining me, guys. Stay tuned. Make sure to like and subscribe. More about mortgages if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate it. And um, have a great week, everybody. Signing off. Take care.